You don't have to be famous or signed to a record label to make a living as a musician. In this video, we're gonna talk about 11 potential income streams for any musician or composer in 2021. Hey everyone, my name is Robert Rodriguez and I'm a media composer. If you're new here, I wanna invite you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. My goal is to help brand new composers feel confident entering the world of music. That's why today we're gonna to go over 11 ideas that could diversify your income as a musician. Like I said, you don't have to be famous or on the road to make a living. Being a musician now is very different from what it was even 10 years ago. So let's get started with income stream number one. Distribute your music to platforms like Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, and so on. This is a great option to just get your music and yourself out there, but it can be very difficult to make a living off of just releasing music. You can release music through distributors like CD Baby, TuneCore, DistroKid, but it can cost you more money to release a single or an album than the income that you get from those royalties. Also, it's so important to do your research with these companies. Some are gonna be cheaper than others, but you have to look at what you get in return. Do some calculations and figure out what's the best option for you, not just what you see other people doing. Streaming music can be a great long-term investment, but not for those looking to make money quickly. So to kind of go along with this idea of royalties, stream income number two is gonna be to sign up with a performing rights organization or a pro. If you're in the US, you could go with ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC, and there might actually be some others as well. Music publishers or these pros collect royalties based on the composition. So this can include radio plays, live performances, sheet music, anything composition related. I personally use ASCAP, but like I said in the last point, do some research into which organization might be best for you. Pros are just the other side of royalty collection so that you can get everything that's owed to you. And so to kind of wrap up this idea of royalties, sync licensing is becoming huge. So income stream number three is to license your music for platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. These aren't necessarily platforms designed for music streaming like Apple Music or Spotify, but these platforms let you collect sync royalties. So this is basically when your music is used in a video format. TikTok, for example, is becoming one of the biggest ways for your music to get discovered. So if anyone's creating a TikTok, they can go through the platform's music library and pick your music to use in their video. And so that becomes another great way for you not to leave money on the table. Income stream number four is for you to work as a composer, an orchestrator, an arranger, a copyist, an assistant, something in the industry. So this can be a little bit rarer and probably a big ask for newer musicians, but it really comes down to your connections. How can you make friends and just build relationships with people in the industry? I don't mean making friends with other musicians or composers. That can be great in itself to be part of a music community, but you're all pretty much on the same playing field. You wanna build genuine friendships with other filmmakers and other figures that can actually get you work. And building these relationships are important because no one wants to hire somebody that doesn't have a recommendation or a connection that's backing you up. Number five, work freelance gigs for sites like Fiverr or Upwork. This is a bit different from the last point because you don't need connections to start. Instead, you go to sites like these with a specific skill set in mind. You advertise yourself, and if you get picked up, you have a very formal interaction to begin with. The benefit is that if you do have a great interaction with someone, this can become a recurring gig and you can build those relationships like we talked about in the last point. Number six, sell your music to royalty-free libraries. Now, this is a tricky one, but you could get a quicker source of income. A royalty-free library like Epidemic Sound, for example, lets creators pay a membership and use music without the fear of getting a copyright claim. Now, as a musician, you could sell the rights to your music to companies like Epidemic Sound, and they will pay you upfront. Then they might split the stream profits 50-50, but that kind of depends on the company that you're working with. The only thing is that they require you to leave your performing rights organization or the pros that we talked about in Stream Income 2, which could be a good or bad thing depending on your financial situation. On one hand, you could keep writing music for these royalty-free libraries and just get paid upfront. On the other hand, you should be thinking long-term, so leaving your pro could mean that you're leaving
leaving money on the table. Tip number seven, perform your music at live venues, big or small. This might be great for bands or solo artists, but composers can do this too. If you've ever been to an Olafur Arnold's concert, you know that it can be a whole experience. It's kind of a mix between minimal orchestral and electronic music. So no matter what kind of music you create, think of local venues that you could perform at and get your music out there. Especially with the pandemic hitting last year, live streams have become massive. So it could be a good idea to stream your music or even just your compositional process on platforms like YouTube or Twitch. Twitch is typically a platform that lets you stream your gameplay and it's great at building a community. Streaming on YouTube is relatively new, and though the community building aspect is different from Twitch, the discoverability format is fantastic. Either way, you could set up donations and get paid from subscribers on Twitch or memberships on YouTube, and this could result in monthly income. Sticking with this idea of memberships and donations, number nine is gonna be Patreon. Patreon is a site that lets you offer membership tiers in exchange for exclusive access to whatever it is you want to share. I've seen so many different tier options, but maybe for a dollar a month, members could get a general space for community and you could kind of advertise it as, if you donate, you're buying me a coffee. And people will actually donate just a dollar a month to support your music or to support you. So maybe the next tier could be $5 a month and members get access to early releases of your music, you wanna make sure that you're providing something worth $5 a month to say thank you to your members for upgrading to the next tier. Then maybe for $15 a month, you give members access to all of the above plus live streams of just you and your $15 a month members. Something where you can all just chat and talk about your music or their music. Maybe they have questions for you. As you increase your tiers, maybe start thinking about how you can give them access to you. Maybe another tier is where you have one-on-one -on -one 30 minute chats, but make sure that's gonna be a higher ticket because they're getting your time and your time is extremely, extremely important. Number 10, education. As a musician, we all have some sort of knowledge in music that others don't. You don't even have to be an expert in the field, but what's something that you know and could teach somebody. Maybe you could try teaching the instrument that you play or vocal lessons or composition lessons or music theory lessons. It's so easy to forget how much we actually know until we speak with somebody who has no idea what we're talking about. There's somebody out there who's willing and wants to learn what you know. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be the one to teach it to them. So education brings me to the final potential income stream and that is a digital product. The thing about music lessons and selling your services in general is that you're limited by the amount of time that you have to scale your income. You could increase your prices, but after a while, those prices need to match the amount of value that you give. Then you're still limited to how much time you have in a day anyway. With digital products, you could create an evergreen online course or some sort of digital download. These are great for scaling your income because you do the work one time and once you're done, you have a passive income stream that does the work for you with every online sale. So as a musician, how can you take the information from a music lesson and turn that into a course? Or can you create some downloadable guide or chart or cheat sheet that you can sell that actually helps and teaches other musicians. In the end, you are a musician and you are a business, not in a slimy or sleazy corporate way, but understand that making a living off of just releasing music or just creating art is near impossible unless you already have a relatively big following. Also think, what if one income stream dries up or you just stop bringing in money from one specific source. Keeping your eggs in multiple baskets will be extremely beneficial for you financially in the long run. For me, I think it comes down to building a community not only on music platforms, but also on places like YouTube or Twitch where you can get to know the audience that you're working for. 
So you can use one to all of these methods to help you grow your income as a musician. And let me know if you got value today. If you did, I want you to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new music content. And if you are new to composing, I wanna give you access to my free composer reference guide. It covers almost any genre for film and television and breaks the music down into four foundations melody, harmony, rhythm, and orchestration. It's gonna be great for any new composer looking for a simple starting point and an overview of each genre. So as always, thank you for stopping by and happy composing.